This is Gary Hines of the three-time Grammy Award-winning Sounds of Blackness. Please stand by for Season 8 of Let's Talk to the Lord, Gospel Radio Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Trying to do what's right, but it does. Yeshua Jesus the Christ. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of Omega International Prophetic Ministries. Thank you for tuning in for season eight and the new beginnings of Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel 
radio talk show. And Kingdom, our returning guest for Let's Talk to the Lord in Season 8 is Jason Davis. Kingdom, Jason Davis is returning from Season 7. That episode was magnificent, and it will tell you how to fortify your business. And that episode is available on YouTube, iHeart, Apple, Spotify, Speaker to listen to and download. Kingdom Brother Jason Davis is so excellent with business and finance until I named him our Kingdom Economic Strategist for Let's Talk to the Lord. And he is more than capable through his books and business knowledge to reach out to and help navigate starting a business. Dr. Jason Davis, welcome back to Let's Talk to the Lord. Yes, it's great to be with you, Apostle. Excited to come back on the platform and share with you and share with the people. Uh, such a great platform, such a great show. Always a pleasure to be on. Amen. And how has life and work been since our last episode? Wow, Apostle, it has been great. I, I, I'm trying to think back i know my wife and i we bought <clears throat> we bought a new home uh, we've been spending time with family there's been a good bit of uh, travel both personally and professionally and so it's been it's been a really fruitful season apostle god is, is certainly moving i'll talk a little bit later about other projects and things that i've been working on uh, in 2023 and also going into 2024 but apostle it has been it has been great uh, it's been a season of prayer uh, a season of faith and initiative and moving on what god is calling me to do amen kingdom the lord laid it upon my heart and brother jason davis agreed to return to talk about youth entrepreneurs to give our youth a little guidance with starting a business kingdom i have a sincere appreciation for our young people in business they should really honor the lord to be able to carry such a responsibility prayerfully i pray this episode will inspire parents and their children to come together and expand in the marketplace with more youth entrepreneurs kingdom entrepreneurship is at its most basic level listeners entrepreneurship refers to an individual or a small group of partners who strike out on an original path to create a new business in short it's the activity of setting up a business or businesses taking on the financial risk in the hopes of a profit parents you play a key role especially with our youth being minors that means parents are going to have to finance or find the finance to help begin your business they will need to acquire a education in that area preferably you have parents who are in relationship with God and are business oriented so the Holy Spirit can bring light to this path I found kingdom in Matthew, the 25th chapter, the 14th through the 46th verses, which really speaks to this topic. It tells the parable of the talents and how the servant should use their master's money. Everything we have is because of God. It's him that gifted us with these talents, and this passage speaks to corruption and illegal means. Kingdom and Brother Davis covered in se Season 7 the etiquette we should have in our character in the workplace for a smooth-running work environment. 
ethics play a major role because God is entrusting us to obey the laws, to pay our taxes, to give a fair wage, to treat one another with respect and dignity, to not steal or embezzle funds because there is a system in place to how you are paid from your business. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme, and it takes a lot of dedication to make your business a success. We can't just pass the whole thing off on mom and dad, but like your first pet, you have to take on a lot of responsibility. That's another reason why I appreciate parents who are able to identify their gifted children and willing to do what it takes to learn what they need to learn to help their children become successful. And that's with any gift, whether it's sports, music, the arts, commercials, television, fashion, styling, mechanics, etc. So, Brother Jason Davis, let's start with the parents. How do parents identify that they have an entrepreneur amongst their children? And I know your answer will cover all talents, but we are focusing on entrepreneurs in this episode. Brother Davis. Absolutely, Apostle. <clears throat> One of the first things that comes to mind is what are the interests of the child and how do they interact relationally? When I say interest, are they the type of child that has big ideas? Are they constantly talking about and thinking about selling? An example would be, are they always selling gum or candy? To their friends there there are some kids that just have a natural bent they're just always caught up in transactional things going on at school um, yes. how is the influence with their friends are they the type that um, I think about that book how to win friends and influence uh, people apostle are they that type of child that just has uh, charisma the extrovert not saying introverts can't by the way if your child is introverted but do they have a way with their friends to where they can influence them and, and they the other friends follow them do they are they open to trying new things uh, so interest is, is one category the second would be gifts and talent some kids just have a knack for communication and what I mean by that apostle is you can go in almost any classroom in America and there's always that one or two kids in the class that everybody listens to why is that because that kid that boy that girl has figured out a way to communicate in a fashion that people listen to them so how is that child's communication style and gifting? And then the third one, Apostle, is their knack for problem solving. One of my favorite examples of this, if you've ever heard of uh, Gabby Bowes, Gabby Goodwin, awesome story. Uh, yeah. She created Gabby Bowes, and that product, Gabby Bowes, came out of a problem solving with her hair she she between her and her mom and I can't remember the full story but definitely go check out Gabby Bowes Gabby Goodwin and, and the story with her parents is online but that problem apostle was born out of the clips could wouldn't stay in her hair when she would go out to play and she would get frustrated and get annoyed and she at, at it, that dialogue actually started with her and her mom about well how can I how can my hair stay straight when I'm playing if I don't have the the, the clips gone and forgive me as, as I'm a dude and not, <laughs> and not a woman but you get the idea so uh, parents I would say if, and in terms of identifying entrepreneur traits what are their interests what have you observed about their gifts and talents and what is their knack for problem-solving 
Amen. Brother Davis, from the identification, please be that parent. Educate parents on what that initial conversation should be with their child before taking the next steps to bringing the vision to life. Sure. I I would say first, like with anything, commit it to prayer. You know, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go on a girl's old who won't depart from it. So you're already training and equipping your children. And a lot of that is just committing and ha- and modeling prayer. So I would say pray because the Holy Spirit will guide you on how to talk to your children. Each child uh, is different and is wired differently. So you can't talk to one kid like you talk to the other. So commit it to prayer. Second is just create that space to have an open dialogue with them to let them know that uh, they have your support ask them about their hopes and dreams you know apostle i think one of the most underrated activities that parents can do is to ask their kids you know hey son hey daughter what are your dreams what are your hopes i've seen some of the things you're interested in tell me about them i want to know you know it's not too early apostle to ask kids about goals yes you're not going to get some you know business plan the way you'd ask an adult but ask them you know hey what would you like to do and you know make it a shorter time frame maybe three to five years but ask them but i believe that open dialogue that support and that conversation about hopes and dreams i think that creates and cultivates an environment and a conversation uh to take the next step, Apostle, I really do. Amen. So, Brother Davis, help our youth on how to approach mom and dad about opening a business and beginning a business. Sure. So now we we flip over to the other side. We have the parents, then we have the kids. I think it's important, kids, if you're listening, um, word it in a way, hey, mom, dad, I, I have an idea that I want to run by you, but I need your help and your support, and I want to get your thoughts. You know, Apostle, in this day and time, you know, even going back to when we were kids, a lot of things are different and some things remain the same. And one of the things that remain the same as kids is we think um, that we have the answer. I know I certainly did when I was younger. And so kids, if you position it in a way, hey, mom, dad, I want to run something by you, and I need your help. I've been looking into it. So kids, this is where preparation comes into play. Again, you don't need a big, fancy business plan. Some kids do. There's a whole bunch of success stories out there, Apostle. But I have an idea. I want to run by you. Uh, I've looked into some things from research. Let's take something very basic, Apostle, like a lemonade stand or selling cookies. And I know we live in the age of of shows like Shark Tank and things like that. So I understand kids have some very intricate ideas. But on a basic level, talk about that idea. Talk about, I've looked at the industry. I've, here's what I've observed about, mildly, about the opportunity or competition. And explain it in a way that you want to have that open dialogue that's what i would say don't don't come to your parents number one parents love their children but kids i would say come with a spirit of humility (laughs) don't come in like you have everything figured out because the honest answer whether you're a kid or an adult if you're an entrepreneur entrepreneur you don't have it all figured out and that's why we need the leading of the holy spirit in our business but that's what i would say uh apostles approach that conversation with humility and that you've looked into a few things and you'd like to explore what it looks like to move forward. Hey, man, Brother Davis, what are the next steps coming from the perspective of a project, either that they have designed or perhaps to a franchise or, as you just said, simply baking cookies? Yeah, this is where we start to get a little bit more specific and without going into like full detail because, you know, some kids are younger 
when they start the business. I mean, I've heard great stories uh, as young as kids that are eight or nine starting a business, not just Amen. middle school, high school, or college. But the big thing is, who are you serving? Who is your target market? If your target market is uh, teenage boys that like to wear basketball jerseys, if it's you know teenage girls that like a, a, a certain thing, the big thing about a product is why does the product exist? What problem is it solving? And who are you serving? That's any product apostle, whether you know the business owner is a kid or an adult. Who are you serving? Why does your product matter? What's the, and, that, and, and another way of saying that is what's the story behind it? That's why I encourage people to check out Gabby Bowes, um, her story, because the why behind it was she couldn't play without the clips falling out of her head. And to her as a little girl, that was frustrating. And then it was frustrating for the mom and dad to constantly have to put new hair clips in her hair every time because she was an active kid. So in that example, there was a solution for both the parent and for little girls. So what is the target market and what's the story behind the product? On a basic level, just three things to think about. Do you have a way to get your message out? Marketing. Uh, obviously, we live in the age of social media, but uh, with help and support, and this is where parents kind of can come into play. You may not, you know, basic website or a, even a landing page. So do you have a way to get the message out? Do you have a way to get the product out by inventory? Let's take the lemonade or cookies as an example. Do we have a way to continuously make the lemonade or the cookies? And if we run out, do we have a way to replenish it? <laughs> so you need to have a mechanism to get the product out. So do we have a way to get the word out? Do we have a way to get the product out? And thirdly, got to get your money, get the coins. Do we have a way to accept payment? Now, in this digital age, Apostle, we've got a ton of options. We've got Square, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, all types of things. Obviously, cash is still out there, but do we have a way to get the message out? Do we have a way to get the product out and do we have a way to accept payment? Those are some of the next steps, Apostle. And, and, and then I, I couldn't um, move forward without mentioning this part. I think it's important to have a mentor. And this is where the parents can really uh, come into play here. If in the development of this product or this idea, if your child is looking for more knowledge and, and wisdom about what to do, and obviously they're young, find somebody with a similar idea, product, or service that's already in business that can be a mentor for your kid. Obviously, commit it to prayer, but find a mentor for your child. And so those are the types of things that I would think about in terms of product readiness apostle. Amen, amen, and amen again. Brother Davis, what kind of paperwork will our entrepreneurs need as far as licensing, branding, and trademarking so they have ownership of their product, franchise, or cookies? Absolutely. Uh, two key professionals that need to be involved in this conversation a tax professional and a attorney that specializes in small business. Why do I say that? Well, the type of business entity that gets filed. So whether that's, you know, sole proprietorship, LLC corporation, and I'm not, listen, kids are bright these days. So I'm not holding back anything on what the possibilities are, but in order to consult, the direction you should go. And I am not a tax pro and I am not an attorney, so this is not legal or tax advice. What I am committing to is giving the wisdom of seek a tax professional and a small business attorney who can understand your idea or product, who you're serving, 
and they can look at financially what business entity makes sense for you to register as well as uh, from a financial liability perspective, even a liability to you personally versus um, the business entity itself. So a tax pro and a small business attorney will be able to help you there. On the licensing side, check with your uh, local municipality, so your city or your county. A lot of times, especially if you're a home-based business, um, your local city is heavily involved and they may require you to have a business license. Now, each state uh, has different laws and does business differently. Some states are more small business friendly, as they say, but check with your state, your city and county to see if there's additional licensing required. So we've got tax professional, small business attorney, and then check your state, city, and county websites under uh, business or economic development, and they'll guide you. Another resource that I want to mention, uh, Apostle, that has really helped others, and that's an organization known as SCORE.org, SCORE.org. And what they do, and I love them, their mission is to foster vibrant small business communities through mentoring and education. Now, I mentioned earlier mentorship, if you know a, an entrepreneur personally, but if you don't, then SCORE is a great organization. They have chapters all over the country in multiple states, and you can walk your idea and concept. Uh, you can walk it through with them, and they can provide guidance and point you in other directions and even make referrals for some of those business professionals I was telling you about. And so SCORE Dot org is another uh, resource that you have that may be in your local uh, area or maybe not too far from you, but I, I highly recommend SCORE. I've, I've gotten great feedback from others and making that recommendation, and I've reached out to them myself as well. And lastly, how do we get ready for the marketplace? to make appealing the vision that God has given to them to the public. Absolutely. Um, again, in all things, to commit it to prayer. Apostle, by this stage, the parent and the child have clearly uh, talked and hashed things out, maybe involved other people. So committing it to prayer, the Word says, commit your work to the Lord and He'll establish your plans in the book of Proverbs. So commit it to prayer. That's number one. Number two would be to plan a launch party. Um, get your friends, uh, members of your church, your local assembly, get people involved so that they can spread the word and have a launch party. Um, it doesn't have to be something big or massive, but maybe that is your idea to make it big. Get those who already know you love you and support you and get them to be a brand or product advocate and have a launch party. I remember I had a launch party for my book and it was an all day ordeal. Now we were kind of sheltered in place. I was during COVID, but thank goodness uh, we're back outside and you can rent a community center or a neighborhood clubhouse or something, but have a launch party and get, um, get people excited about it. So prayer, uh, a launch party, and um, do it with a targeted group of people. If you've got enough people influence, and it can be a huge, like, you know, 100 and some of the people, that's great. But now at this stage, if you've probably done some light testing or prototyping, that's another way to kind of bring something to market, is if it works with a small group of people, there's a good chance it works with a larger group. And I cannot uh, reiterate this enough in entrepreneurship is it's, if something doesn't work, it's okay. It's okay to make tweaks early and often. Feedback, feedback, feedback is key. The first iteration or first version of something was never the best. We can look at Apple's iPhone. The first iPhone was highly innovative but if you were to have the first iphone today in 2023 
you would laugh it out of the room. It's like, man, what is this? There's, we've got all types of fancy touchscreens and Siri and all these other features, but it didn't start that way. So get your product out there. Start that way, but it doesn't have to remain that way and be open to feedback because your customer will help you make this product the best that it can be. But you don't want to be an echo chamber. <laughs> you don't need an echo chamber. There's how you feel about your product. But ultimately, if you want green certificates of appreciation, <laughs> you got to be open to customer feedback. And Brother Davis, this episode is geared more for the uneducated parents who has a child that is possibly ready for entrepreneurship. We are using this episode to help plow the ground and lay the foundation and get it fertile for them to begin and head in the right direction. So as we close, is there anything else that we have left out so our listeners have a clear path to go? One thing that comes to mind, Apostle, and it's in the back of my mind, and that's funding. Well, Jason, that's great. My kid wants to start a business, but we don't have a lot of money, or, or maybe you do, so may, maybe there's savings. Um, but then the, the organization I mentioned earlier, SCORE.org, they've got a lot of resources. Another resource I wanted to point out, Apostle, was um, the uh, SBA, U.S. Small Business administration they've got a lot of resources as well if funding is the way that you'd like to go so between score.org and uh, sba.gov the u.s small business administration they are for small business most of the economy is made up of small businesses now yes corporate employs thousands of people in the united states but small businesses make up most of the economy and so if funding is a question that you have consider any uh, savings that you could possibly use if if you were trying to go more of a debt free route but if you don't have that and you want to know where you could access other capital uh, check out score.org and sba.gov amen Amen and amen again. Brother Jason Davis, please, sir, reintroduce yourself to the kingdom. Absolutely, Apostle. This has been a wonderful episode. I'm always happy to come on this platform. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jason Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Fortify. I'm an author, speaker, teacher, encourager, and stewardship coach, and I help mission-driven people prioritize their faith and the marketplace. And I do this by uniquely blending faith, business, and finance. Amen. And how may the kingdom support your ministry and retain your services and purchase your books? Yes. You, for more information, you can check out my website, jerichoforce.com. Uh, I wrote a book during the pandemic called Fortify, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business. The mounting pressures of work environments cause a lot of believers to comply with the world's way of handling business rather than changing the business climate with your faith. So in my book, uh, it's for business owners and employees desiring to learn more about God's significance in the workplace. And Fortify, you'll learn why you work, who you really work for, and what business accomplishes when it's conducted in a godly fashion. So you can get your copy of Fortify on Amazon. Type Jason Davis Fortify, and you'll see the blue book come up. And so you can get to it from going to JerichoForce.com or by going to Amazon.com. I've got also... A, a supportive uh, companion guide, a workbook and journal. And so you can go to JerichoForce.com or find that on Amazon. And I strongly encourage you. It'll enhance your reading experience if you get the workbook journal with 
the paperback copy. Fortify is available both in paperback and ebook form. I'm also the host of the Fortified Life podcast, where we're passionate about developing a dependency on Jesus and the marketplace. We stream live every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Come learn as guests, uh, coaches, CEOs, business owners, authors share about their passion for Christ in the marketplace, as well as sharing their business expertise, knowledge, and wisdom. But JerichoForce.com to find things, find out all things Jason Davis, a.k.a. Mr. Fortify. And again, Fortify being rooted in God's plan for work and business. You can find it on JerichoForce.com or Amazon. And Kingdom Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, including the iHeartRadio app on your Roku, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You may download episodes from www.speaker.com. Please don't forget the apostrophe at S and let we are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. from the Kingdom Influencers Broadcast.com and at 11 a.m. every Saturday from Sensational Sounds Radio.net. Stream us 24 7 from the Weekend Channel. Dot TV. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please follow us on X.com at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. International. Please download our app on your Play Store for your cell phones found under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. Kingdom, you may now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International, and Alexa will play Let's Talk to the the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Shows. Kingdom, Let's Talk to the Lord is your 24-hour station for talk shows, gospel news, radio interviews, and Christian music. Order our book on Amazon Spiritual Guidance through Alzheimer's Disease, authored by my sister, Camille V. Porter. All of my music are available on Amazon and all digital stores and outlets. Lord, give me another chance. Featuring Sean E. Scales and Tamara Lloyd is available under Apostle Johnny Roth. And remember now, thy creator featuring King David the Vessel, a new duel and doctrine is listed under Minister. John E. Ross. You can now listen to our radio station on your Roku, found under the My Tuner application on your Roku. Then search us out by Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. So, Kingdom, until next time, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Yeshua Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I believe God heals I believe God makes a way I believe God restores I believe God opens doors I believe He's the God of peace I believe He's my everything 